Hey, what's up my dudes? For today's video, I was in the mood for making a really technical ring. So I kind of wanted to experiment and see how crazy I could make things. The string's a bit over the top, but I think it turned out pretty cool. I'm just going to be combining three of my favorite materials. So the first two materials we're going to use are Timascus and Superconductor. And those we'll use, we'll split them half and half. So half of the ring will be Timascus and the other half will be the Superconductor. And then I want to do a carbon fiber liner. So in total, I'm going to have to combine three pieces. So I'm going to have to get pretty technical unless I want this to be a fat, clunky ring. So it's going to require a bunch of different steps and techniques that you won't see in most of my other videos. So for carbon fiber, I've actually got a huge selection here. A company called Carbon Waves actually sent me all these samples so I could feature them in my videos. So this is going to be the first video I do with them. I'm thinking it would be really cool to do a series on how to make these carbon fiber rings from these materials. I know I've had a bunch of you comment saying you wanted some more simpler rings that you could do at home. And carbon fiber is a great place to start. You don't need all that much equipment to get started. So let me know how you like the idea of that down in the comments. Okay, for this ring, I'm gonna be using the black and white carbon fiber material you can see here. I think it's got some really cool contrast to it. So now that we've got all three of our materials selected, I'm just going to show you guys a cross section of the ring so you guys can kind of picture it in your head and get a better idea of what I'm going for here. So one half we're gonna do superconductor, the other half the Timascus, and then the liner out of carbon fiber. Now the carbon fiber, it's actually gonna make the ring pretty strong, and it's also really comfortable against your skin. So that's gonna make this a really comfortable ring to wear around. All right, we're gonna start off with the superconductor. And as you can see, this is one of the tilted slices of superconductor. And I normally use my belt sander to kind of round it off, but I actually have the water jet channel pierce a hole through the middle of it. So I'm able to skip that step and just round it off using the lathe cutter. And then you'll see here I'm putting in a lip on the edge of the ring. And you'll see how I use this later. I'm actually going to press fit the superconductor and the Timascus together. That way this thing will hold together better. And it'll also have a much more seamless transition between the two materials. So now I've got the outside of the superconductor piece done. I'm putting it back in my lathe jaws and I'm going to continue hollowing it out until I get to the dimensions that I need. And it's actually pretty thin because I need to leave room for a liner. So we'll take a similar process here. I'm going to hollow out the inside of it and put it on a ring mandrel. And then I'm going to trim it down until they have very similar outside diameters.
And then same thing that I did on the superconductor. After I've got the outside done, I'm going to do the finalized diameter on the inside as well. But then I'll be doing an extra step here. I'll be cutting a groove on the inside diameter. So I'll be able to use my one ton arbor press to smash these two together. Now I'm going to add some bevels to the ring. I think this will make it look a little bit more interesting because the Timascus, that has some really cool patterns on it and that'll help show that off a little bit better. And then same thing goes for the superconductor. It'll just expose a kind of a cross section of it a little bit better. Okay, now I'm ready to flame anodize the Timascus. And it's important I do this now because if I add the carbon fiber liner to it, it will completely destroy the ring if I try to hit it with a blowtorch for that long. So it'll totally burn up all the adhesive I used to put this together, as well as destroy the resin that is impregnated into the carbon fiber, which is what holds it together. So I've only got one shot at this and I don't want to scratch it from here on out because if I do that I'm going to have to take out the carbon fiber liner, then reheat treat it, and then put another carbon fiber back in. So that's going to be no fun at all. All right, now it's time to add the carbon fiber liner. So to cut out the piece of carbon fiber that we need, I'm going to be using these diamond coated hole saws. Now I've got the piece cut out and it doesn't quite fit inside of the other half of the ring and that's good, that's how we want it. We want to trim this to exactly fit and not quite go on easily. We want to use that press to give it a nice press fit like we did earlier.
So sizing is pretty standard. The only thing I'm doing different is being extremely careful, obviously not to scratch anything. And then I'm also turning the lathe really slowly. So you'll see the footage is sped up, so it looks like it's going pretty fast, but it's actually really slow and I've got my hand on my power switch for the lathe because I do not want to get my finger caught in here while this is spinning. Okay, so I'm just doing 220 grit sandpaper all the way up to 1000 grit. And then I'm grabbing two different paper towels. One has a medium polish on it. The other one has a fine polish and that will polish up the surface of the carbon fiber. Make sure it looks really nice and glossy. And with that, the carbon fiber liner is done. And the last step we'll need to do is to etch the superconductor. All right, and here the ring is finished. Definitely be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments. This is a really fun ring to make. It was good to just get creative with things. I got to pick three of my most favorite materials. And then I also got to do a bunch of different techniques for this ring. So it was a really interesting ring process. It took quite a bit of time, but I enjoyed the whole process. And finally, I know I've been telling you in every video recently, but do make sure to go follow me on Instagram. I really like interacting with you guys and showing you what I'm doing on my day-to-day -day basis. It's a great way to connect with you guys where it's not just the once or twice a week videos that I do. And I'm also able to see and reply to most of your guys' comments because to be honest, there's a lot less of you over on Instagram. And YouTube's getting to the point where I don't even see probably half of the comments. All right, and for the 1% of you that are still watching the video at this point, I've got a secret surprise for you. So I want you to go to my Instagram and comment Chex Mix is the greatest snack food period, it's the cereal taste that you eat with your hands. And I'm only gonna do that for the first 50 people who do that. I don't wanna get stuck following one or 2,000 different people in case this video gets a bunch of views. Anyways, hope you all have a fantastic Saturday and I will see you on Wednesday, my dudes.